A few years later, in the world of Narnia, there sat two kings and two queens having afternoon tea. It is probably time to go back, said King Peter. Queen Susan opened her mouth to argue, but she was stopped by Queen Lucy. Sister, my royal brother speaks rightly, said Queen Lucy. King Edmund nodded while eating Turkish delight, remembering that it was rude to speak with his mouth full. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, Mr. Thomas ran into the palace, shouting, Your Majesties, I think I just saw the White Witch. I saw her right outside the stone table. I, I, I think she's doing some kind of magic to it. His lips were trembling. The four kings and queens quickly stood up, and King Peter whistled for their carriage. They quickly boarded the carriage and strode away, leaving Mr. Thomas by himself. His scared face melted and revealed a wicked smile on his face. In a flash, he turned into a raven and flew away. Meanwhile, the four siblings were on their way to the stone table. King Peter held his sword tightly to himself in preparation for any battle against the White Witch. After a long way, they finally found themselves facing the stone table, but they couldn't see anything Mr. Thomas had described. They looked around, wondering if the witch had already gone. Suddenly, a black shadow appeared and they found themselves wrapped in ropes and strings. And the next moment they know, they were already fell asleep. The black shadow walked away, bringing the royal family with them. They walked to a tent with potions and wands of different types inside. She held it in front of a desk, almost with the size of a boat, when a giant-like woman came out. Holding the children close to himself, she laughed like the world was in her hands. The second Lucy woke up, the others also started to waken. The very tall woman stood before them, and they all know who it was, their nemesis, the White Witch. Susan shouted, Let us go! You know who we are! The White Witch only laughed and said, Remember the time your little brats made my magic weaken? Remember the time when Lil Edmund betrayed me? Well, I have come back to retrieve my throne. I've come back and I have created my army of minions. The little girl that brought you guys here is my best witch. I'm going to train them so we can defeat Aslan with a few guys in the way. I have to get rid of you guys. And with that, she walked away. The children looked at each other, hoping each other had a plan. When the White Witch got back with the other witches, they were already ready to cast a spell on the kids, so they could be tortured and she could take over again. But as if magic, Aslan the Great Lion appeared and roared so loud that his roar could be heard outside of a thousand miles. His roar made all the potion bottles crumble. Everything fell onto the floor. His power was even greater than an earthquake. The witch and her minion ran outside to see what was happening, but saw nothing. She went back inside and found that the children were gone. She thought this must be all. She thought this must all have been Aston's doing. I will get them all back. Meanwhile, the children were saved by Aslan and his servant's protection. Aslan explained, the witch is once gone, again back. We have to fight her. There is also a proper that says, the evil rises again, with more power than before. If only there is the Raten, or else there will be no more. The Raten is a stone buried deep underwater in a dam, but we have a friend, the beavers. 
they would help us. So let's go. The five took what they had and started the journey to the river dam. Once they were there, they asked the beavers to help, and they accepted in exchange for 200 million Narnies. That means two, mi two million US dollars. The beavers took only two minutes before finding the stone. The stone was shining green like a scale of a snake. Aslan picked it up and held it up to the sky and recited the words. May the Raten give us the power to take down the evil. Suddenly, the sky started to shake and Aslan shouted, It worked! I can sense it. With that, he turned away and left. The children went back to the lamppost and walked into the wardrobe, into the lives of humans once again. The end.